Hello and welcome to the first video in my new Esperanto 101 series. We're going to look at what Esperanto actually is. Esperanto is a language. But it's not just any language, it's a constructed language. That is to say, one person sat down, thought about it, and designed it from scratch, rather than it evolving naturally from existing languages. It is a language constructed in order to be easy to learn. Its grammar and word building are very simple compared to most natural languages. It was a language constructed in order to be easy to learn so that it can be used for international communication. The creator of the language wanted to solve the problems of international communication to help foster goodwill between human beings. And that creator's name? was Ludwig Lazar Zamenhof. Dr. Zamenhof was born in Białystok, Poland, which was then part of the Russian Empire, to a Jewish couple. Because of this, his native languages growing up were Yiddish and Russian. Over the years, he soon learned German, French, Hebrew, and Polish. And later in his life, he acquired some English and studied some other languages as well. Dr. Zamenhof found himself very early in life saddened by the hatred among the different ethnic and national groups he saw in Białystok. He became convinced that a neutral auxiliary language would provide understanding and goodwill among people. An auxiliary language means that he didn't want everyone to grow up speaking the same first language all over the entire world but he thought it would be good if everyone learned as their second or maybe third language a common language. This way, everyone could maintain their existing literature, poetry, and the nuances of the various national languages, but be able to communicate with each other in peace. On his 19th birthday in 1878, he had gotten far enough with the language that he celebrated its birth with his friends, but he continued to revise it until the year 1887, when it was finally published as Dr. Esperanto's International Language. That year it was published in Russian, Polish, French, and German. An interesting note, he was supported by his father-in-law, who encouraged him to use the money he received as dowry for marrying his wife as seed money to get the book published. Within the next few years, translations into other languages began to come out as well, and there have been many since. He published the book under the pseudonym Doctoro Esperanto, which in Esperanto means Dr. Hopeful, or the doctor who hopes. And he declared the book to be public domain. He wanted to make sure that no one was worried about any copyrights or legal issues if they chose to use the language. In the initial publication, the language was simply called Dr. Esperanto's International Language, or even more simply, International Language. But by 1889, it had become known as Esperanto, after the pseudonym of its creator. So Esperanto is a language that is one who hopes. Today, it is estimated that as many as 2 million people have some proficiency with Esperanto. And there are even about 1 to 2,000 native Esperantists. These are people whose parents spoke Esperanto at home, often people who met through the Esperanto community, and maybe Esperanto was their sole common language. Stay tuned to this series of videos if you would like to learn how to read, write, and speak Esperanto. Thanks for watching.